Folks, are you tired of people telling you your band is too darn loud when you're just trying to practice in your house or garage? Well, if you live in Austin, I have the solution for you. That's Space Rehearsal and Recording. Space is a state-of-the-art affordable venue for rehearsal and recording located just a few miles south of downtown Austin. They have 31 spacious rooms, great PAs, fantastic courteous staff. They have everything you need to get your artistic business together at Space. Find them at 512-448-9518 or go to spaceatx.com and start playing as loud as you want in space, rehearsal, and recording. Let's get down. Johnny, I'm your host. Welcome to the show. Well, this is the third show this week. Three show week, man. What are you guys doing? You getting ready for the Austin City Limits Music Festival 2022 weekend two? Is that what you're doing? Do you guys listen to uh, Wednesday's show? I had two artists that are performing there tomorrow together. And their new song, Cafe, comes out today. That's Como Las Movies featuring special guest uh, Sheila. And they, their new single, Cafe, is out today. Get out there and check it out. Great song. Also, they'll be uh, performing it tomorrow together at Austin City Limits Music Festival, Saturday, October 15th, uh, on the Honda stage at 1245. That's the Honda stage at 1245. Como Las Movies with special guest Sheila. Should be great. Get back there and listen to it if you didn't listen to it. Great conversation. Sheila is a fascinating person. I've known her for quite a few years, and she's moved to Miami now to pursue her Latin pop R&B dreams. And she's doing a great job of it. The music she's putting out is fantastic. She's got a new song called Soltera that's available. And, of course, this uh, this collaboration with the great Como Las Movies. All right. Uh, all right. So today, that this uh, the day that this drops, uh, Friday, October 14th, that's my birthday. It's my birthday. I'm not, I'm not really thrown down today. I've got a session with El Combo Oscuro, who are in our artist development program at Austin Music Foundation. So I'll be out at the bubble with my friends Frenchie and Anar all day working on stuff. Still haven't gotten word about my car, which is driving me fucking nuts. Drive me, f- dude, try not having a car. It's terrible. It's awful. <laughs> it's awful. Maybe you do. Maybe you've tried it. It's, it's not something I recommend to people to try, but try it if you don't, if you don't believe it sucks because it really does. Um, I have not heard back from them. They ordered the part. I, you know, like there's the whatever, the the supply chain breakdown and the fucking people not working and the whole thing. Uh, look, normally I'm not just walking around angry about it, but when you don't have a car for almost two weeks, it sucks. And it's my birthday. Come on, man. It's my birthday, you guys. <laughs> Happy birthday to me. Gang, I have a great show for you today. Rapper, songwriter, producer, Wes Denzel is on the show today. He's based out of San Antonio. You might, If you live in Austin, you might remember that he was February 2021's Artist of the Month on KUTX. Uh, his brand new single, Zodiac Killer, is out now. It's fantastic. He's got a bunch of singles out that are great. Don't change. Crazy. Let you down. Why don't you? This guy's fantastic. But the song Zodiac Killer just came out in September. We actually did this conversation, had this conversation quite a while back. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm just now putting it out, but we had just an influx of so many shows. I actually took like three weeks off of doing interviews because I had done so many. Anyway, Wes Denzel, San Antonio based, uh, hip hop artist. Absolutely fantastic. Fantastic artist. Find him at westdenzel.com. Great, great, great songwriter. These tunes are great. This song, Zodiac Killer, is great. You're about to hear it right now. So without further ado, please enjoy my conversation with this, uh, fantastic artist, Wes Denzel. Let's get down. Thought you was a Pisces Found out she was a Scorpio Ooh, What else you found out, brother? Said she was a Libra A Gemini would be nice to know Thought she was a Sagittarius Zodiac Killer. Zodiac Killer. Fucking great jam. Thank you. Yeah. 
Thanks. Yeah. So this will come out after after it drops, so people will be able to hear it. Um, tell me, because it is. I went back and listened. I read. I read. I got the thing from your publicist. <laughs> I read this stuff, and then I went and listened to your stuff, and just kind of like did a listen, and then went and listened specifically to stuff, and then was like, well, what's going on in the beginning? So it is a lot. I mean, it's totally different even than the last, uh, the uh, Don't Change and Crazy and uh, Let You Down and Why Don't You singles. Yeah. Uh, did you produce this yourself? I did not produce this myself. Um, I did some arrangement on it, but um, none of the production. Um, normally, that's just my role these days. Uh, the producer that produced this, his name is Bean. He's from overseas, and normally... But he, where? Uh, Spain. Okay. So uh, he produces like a lot of my stuff. Does he? And... I'm normally just doing just rearrangement or structure things to the beat, but as far as actual, you know, playing something on it or putting some drums on it, I try to stay away. But I do produce on the side. I try to produce for other people, or if the beat absolutely needs something, then I'll add it to it. But normally his beats are, they're pretty good, what I'm they looking are. for, and what it has like that different kind of flair to it. Is he the guy that did the, the, uh, the last album, uh, I only get wild with you. He did a lot of songs on I uh, only get wild with you. Okay. Not all of it, but a majority of it is his sound. Okay. Uh, so I tried to keep it a little bit cohesive. So that's why I think he kind of put me in that mood. I think when I was writing to a lot of his stuff, it yeah. put me in the mood to feel like, okay, this is turning into a project. So what he sends you, he sends you what? Like a, the pretty much the track? Just, just the track. Yep. Uh, and then um, if it's a bigger song or if it needs kind of, you know, if I'm taking it a little bit more seriously, then I'll ask for the stems or get the skit stems. But for now, it's just a track. What happens when you get the and stems? Me. What do you do? You mix it yourself or you take shit out or you add stuff or what's going on? If I normally, if I'm getting the stems, I'm just using it for performance tracks. So I might change it up for performances. Okay. okay. Um, if, if another case, maybe I'm working with someone or someone wants me to do... Uh, a higher thing with my song then it's for them to send it off to a mixer but i'm normally in-house mixing like do all, of my, all of my own stuff okay wait so he does the beats and then you do the mixing he does the beats and then the beat is already mixed and mastered on his end and he yeah. just sends me like little beat packs and then on my end i'm just coming in just making songs okay um so I I see that okay so you get the you get the stems from so you can do live performances I watched your KUTX thing and you do you perform with tracks yes um do, do you want to do like a group thing or what what is it because I know it's like a, I'm a solo artist as well yes sir. and it costs a lot of money <laughs> to go play a show and shows don't pay very much money so it's like. It's like this thing where you're like, what do I have? Like this really expensive hobby? Like now I'm a golfer or something where I spend like, you know, 600 bucks a week. I know like, it, it's already expensive without the band. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It is. Um, but do you, do you want that or do you, are you, cause you, you, you know, we're different ages. I'm 53. Yes, sir. I am 29. Okay. Don't call me sir anymore. Cause it's freaking me out. Like it's bad enough that I feel old and like they took all my money from the <laughs> gas station where I went and got gas. <laughs> no. Uh, so it's it's normal like you you grew up in a world where people doing stuff to tracks and like one guy on stage with a lot of music happening is a normal thing yeah i mean you'll see a lot of the bigger artists now even if they don't show it throughout the stage at least somewhere in the background maybe not for all their songs but there's normally like some live instruments even for like rappers and stuff i know I've been to like a J. Cole concert and he's good at like having a band. I just watched on the way here. I was watching a Usher Tiny Desk and you know the Tiny Desk, uh -huh. the yeah. artists normally always have the bands in the background. Yeah. So it's pretty popular. But like you said, it's just a money thing and kind of like knowing like those people. But but yeah, in a perfect world or if I had the budget, then for sure, I right. think I would like to perform with like a band. And I've had people tell me that, man, you would probably sound good if you had live people playing everything. I don't, I don't. I mean, being also my age and like a, a rock band guy and a band guy, I don't, I don't, I remember when, when, when you, when I first started seeing uh, rap and hip hop acts like with a live band, it was pretty unbelievable. And they're, they're turned into like this kind of like, you know, metal and rap guys were getting together early on, like Anthrax and Public Enemy and stuff. And, and, uh, but now, cause your beats are really unique, uh, your beats are really unique. 
that it I feel like if you got a band to back you up, you just sound like a guy with a band as opposed to how unique your shit sounds now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They can genericize it. I think that's one side of it. I think we probably have to rehearse a lot <laughs> and maybe just have some of the instruments still be, you know, digital. Well, because a lot of it is like it's based in that. Yes. Like your sound is based in that. Yep. But um but I don't know. I think I would at least like to try it. I know one thing that I think now that kind of maybe I would need a band for. I'm getting more confident in my performances. So I've been doing some um, some crowd response things. So I think there, like sometimes I just have to anticipate and hope that maybe the crowd is big enough or that the crowd wants to participate. That like, all right, I have this beat dropping out right here. And if they don't say it, then oh, it's yeah. going to sound like a little weird instead of like feeling like the vibe. And then maybe I can just cue to like my band like, OK, if I do this cue. We're gonna stop and let them. I'm say in a band, and we have that. So, so yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's just little things like that. I did it my last show, and it worked out okay. I know the first drop, they kind of didn't get it, but it gave me like that momentum to say, "All right, come on," because before the song, I exp- I kind of do this whole thing where I explain to them what to say, and I know the first one is gonna catch them off guard. So I drop it out there, and then I kind of expect them to forget. But then the next ones, they do they do pretty good. So I've done it twice, one time with the song just playing, and then the second time I was like, "All right, let's drop it out and see." If I can actually kind of even in a small venue or not that many people have people to do this. Right. How that's that's another thing about like living in central Texas. Uh, You live in San Antonio. I mean, where do you where do you like where do you play? Uh, Most of my shows, uh, I have an agent. His name is Joe Smith. He works with Nine Mile Records. Yeah, I saw that. So they're they're doing booking for you. Yep. So they say they do booking for me. They're based here, so a lot of my stuff does come in Austin. I'll play some San Antonio stuff if it's just like some friends reaching out to me if they want me to perform or something. But for the most part, a lot of the bookings are coming here in Austin. Where are you finding yourself playing here? I played at Cheer Up Charlie's. Good place. I played at. Empire Garage Room. That's, that's probably that's place. probably been my favorite as far as sound and everything. I've played that uh, I don't know. <laughs> I've played at the White Rabbit in San Antonio. I don't even know if oh, that's yeah. still around, that but still around? that was like a little old school spot. It was probably it's old probably not. Spot, man. But yeah, I played that's like my very first show was there. Um and just little hole in the wall places. I can't really think of uh Captain Quake and Bushes. I oh, think it's called here. Yes, at the one I, down south. Yep. I, yeah, I played there. Um, and just random spots. Nowhere kind of. I don't want to say notorious, but you know, nowhere like legendary yet, or that people might like kind of know of off the bat. But but yeah, I enjoy all the spaces. But like I said, so far, Empire, the garage has probably been my favorite as far as everything. It was like a nice intimate space, and the sound was like super good. So. Yeah. You know what that place to me has become like kind of like the main hip hop room in town. Nice. Yeah, and uh, like it seems like there's DJs. Also Cheer Up Charlie seems to have It's weird because it's it's difficult. It, Austin, you know, we've gone through this whole thing over the last couple of years of like trying to desegregate this music scene even though Austin's all like liberal and like woke and everything. Mm-hmm. Still like this weird there's still like this weird, you know, racial divide in the music scene, which has been, uh, people have been working on, like con- like consciously working on it for the last couple of years. Um, and it's getting better, but it seems like there's difficult, uh, like do you end up playing with like different kinds of of artists? Like is there a pop artist and like a, a whatever Yeah, else? normally, at least for my shows here, I haven't been booked with just a, just a rap show. I know kind of beginning of my career was like that, but ever since I've been with Nine Mile, normally um, he puts me on. I think we've only had one show where it was just three of us rappers, but it was kind of like a small thing. We were just trying to make, you know. Who was it? Was uh, it the other guys from here? It was it was me, the Titas from here, and a guy named AJ Bray, who's a friend of mine. And we all did like a little show together. That was the one at uh, Captain Quake and Bushes. Yeah. Uh, so that was, that was a good show, but that's been the only one to where everybody was the same genre. Like I said, most of the time. I'm playing with nobody else makes hip hop on my set. And then I'll see like the next night will be like the hip hop night (laughs) with all the hip hop artists. Right, right. Yeah. Well, the weird thing is that all of the music, even like you hear it in like country music, even like it influences country music. Like, I don't know how much you've listened to when you listen to modern country, you're like, fuck, like the beats are a little. Yeah. One of of my favorite songs is a country song. So 
Really? Yes. What is it? Uh, Neon by Chris Young. So that's a pretty popular one. How's it go? Uh, the sky ain't shining, Wyoming. It's just about as blue as it gets. And um, the hook is like, Neon. Why they always leave on or something like that. But I don't I know. know. I think it, I think it's a pretty popular song. But yeah, Chris Young Neon is probably one of my favorite country songs. I know I, I just performed it halfway. So Are you the age are you of the age of music where there's no real like you everybody likes everything. There's no like weird Maybe in the middle. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I get like what when you're I saying. was growing up, like I you know I think maybe the generation after me is like that, you know, whatever. A little, like, a little no, more. Like everything's like kind of genre, the genreless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you notice that though, yes. right? It's weird, right? Mm-hmm. I don't think it's weird, but but yeah, I think it's weird because in some way, I think as a fan, it takes you out of the deep fan dumb that I grew up like having for bands, like like my love for for the band Kiss. Like you can just look on that speaker over there; they're everywhere. Yes. you know, and. And it's it was part of my thing. Do people still get that connected? I think they still. Do you I think, think they so? still have that. Kanye has loyal fan base. Uh, there's a guy named Frank Ocean. He has a Frank loyal Ocean's fan amazing. base. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, but he doesn't. It's all the guys who don't drop as often who have that kind of like that cult like. If I do something, if right. you just catch a picture of me in the streets, it's like oh my god. Right. He hasn't dropped music in five years, but we just got this picture of him walking around in New York. Where, where's the music at? Right. right. So I think you still have that. Uh, I don't know if it's as pronounced, but as far as the genres kind of being close, I, I kind of like it. I mean, it puts me on to liking stuff and not feeling so different about it. Like when I listen to like Florence and the Machine, yeah. it feels very familiar, but it's like a different right. type of, you know, music. if I had to compare it to something, it's a different type of R&B or a different type of soul singing, yeah. you know. Yeah. Do you uh do you find yourself like in in like in classification where do you find yourself? As far as like, like what, what, what do you say if someone says like what do you play? Oh well, somebody asks I I'll, I'll tell them like I'm a rap artist hip hop. Okay. There's still some soul and R&B stuff going on in there. Yeah, a little bit. I w- I would agree but just to keep it, you know, simple. I yeah. mean most people unless I know like you make music or something, maybe I might give right. you a more complicated answer. But if you're just like a normal person talking to me, I'll be like, yeah, I'm just I'm a rapper. What if you came here and I didn't make music? I was like, no, no, no. I just I bought all this stuff because I thought it looked cool. I wanted you guys to feel at home. That will be fine. Musicians. Some, <laughs> sometimes people are just into stuff and they have no clue how it works. And they're just like, man, this is kind of cool. I mess with it sometimes. And that's how it is. No, this is my life. <laughs> Most people have a dining room in the space. Um, Wes, you, uh, you don't have any gigs coming up. No gigs coming up, I don't think. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> I like those Nine Mile guys. I it's like a good them. organization. I like them too. Yeah, the cool people putting out good stuff. Yes, Working sir. with cool people. Um, uh, Zodiac Killer was inspired by Tyrese uh, Signs of Love Making. Yes. Which I went and listened to. Yes. And I don't... Oh, did as far as sound, no. <laughs> well, no, no, no. I mean, uh, like, I didn't... I don't know. Maybe I didn't understand what he was saying. Uh, cause he's talking, he's naming the Zodiac signs throughout oh, his okay. song. So immediately like, oh, okay. okay. when I got, I, I started the song with, um, I was just in my car almost driving home and I was just kind of playing the beat and I kind of got that first rhythm of, I, I think in the original one I said, I thought she was Aries. I found out she was a Scorpio. So I'm just repeating that line of like, okay, can I keep this voice that I have? Right. And I was like, can I remember like how it goes just until I get home to like record it and flesh this out like a little more. I only need to flesh out the hook. Yeah. I wasn't worried about any verses or anything. So, um, I kind of, I had those two lines. I think like maybe I wrote some more and then I go back and I ask my friend, I was like, should I name every Zodiac sign or should I just keep it these two? Would that make it too complicated? And then the only song that I know that talks about Zodiac signs, I was like, oh, let me go listen to the Tyree song. And I kind of listened to that and it kind of just helped me write the rest of the song and kind of put me, it made me feel good about, all right, I'm just going to name every Zodiac sign. Right. Because in his song, he named all the Zodiac signs. During the first time I performed with KUTX, we did a Don't Change pop-up performance because it was during COVID. So the place that I found in San Antonio, they drove down for me to record it. The place that I found at the time, it's just a random park. I had been to the park, visited the park, mapped it out. Nobody's there. The day I went, 
they had cleaning crew there. <laughs> oh, right. So yeah, yeah, yeah. There's all these guys and they're, they're doing all this <laughs> stuff the whole time. And I just, I had to go up to like one, uh, one of them who I thought was maybe like, just like the leader or the manager of the yeah, project yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And I was like, Hey, like, oh. can we just do this performance for like two, two songs? It's going to, yeah. it's going to take like 10 minutes if we have to do it twice or whatever. And they all, they all just stopped for that second. And obviously it's a little bit easier than here, but they all just stopped for that. Yeah. And, and I had like a little audience and they were just kind of watching me perform. Now that's the video that's in. It looks like it's in a Grecian structure, yes, a Roman yes. structure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just you dancing. Yep. Yeah, you're fucking cool, man. <laughs> you really are. I don't have that thing where I can stand there and and I don't. I don't think I do. I'm scared to. I mean, I'll do it by myself playing solo. I'm doing that on Thursday. I don't like that. Doesn't. But the idea of like not having a weapon. <laughs> I mean, the microphone is the weapon. Yeah, it is a weapon, but it's not weapony enough for me. I, <laughs> I like guitars; they sound evil. Um, uh, so, all right, I did see that video, and I loved. I loved. So you were you were singing on that because I know at one point you took the mic away, and then you just heard recording stuff, right? Oh uh, yeah, that was a yeah. Everything was live. We had the mic hooked up. It was recorded when I was. So everything was good. It was straight. How through. did you get? How did how did they find you? KUTX they seem to be they seem to love you um DJ Fresh Knight he first played me I had I had a song called What You Need it's probably the song I wouldn't I I don't know if it's my most popular song but it has the most streams of any of my songs so um he played that for a while and he was just kind of supporting me and then I think I put the video out the video out for Don't Change I didn't expect Don't Change to be like a popular song or something Uh that I would send to people so I put the video out videos real kind of cool and goofy and i know it attract people that way and they just um ended up picking up from there i think maybe one person asked for a dj pack it was a dj from san antonio who i can't think of her name but she was like hey could you send me like the the single pack for this kit so i sent it to her and then i said okay since i made this and i know uh dj fresh night i know he played my song what you need maybe he'll play this too so i just sent it over to him and then I guess it just kind of spread out the office and then just randomly one day, because this is before I had Nine Mile with me, they just reached out and was like, hey, like, can you do X, Y, Z? And I was like, oh, that sounds kind of cool. It's interesting when you make, uh, there's a lot of people uh, that that are coming up now that I see that are, are not very uh, trusting of that. If they build it, they will come. You know what I mean? Like if yeah. I make great shit, then people will come. They spend so much time kind of pushing whatever they have yeah and it's not as good as yours you know what i'm saying like they they're more concerned with the pushing of it It seems like when you make a good enough product it actually does get to people yeah someone someone says uh like dj fresh night goes like oh hey you know guy that does this listen to this and like hey let's make that the guy of the month yeah because what you need i knew like what you need would maybe be like a song that would be kind of popular and it was like easy but when i did don't change i was just mainly when I do my videos, I don't think about, you know, I try not to do a popular song. So if I'm picking a video, I'm just like, okay, they already like this. It doesn't need a video oh, okay. for them to discover oh, it. But I was like, hey, they might not like this one as much or they maybe it's toward the end of the track list. They might not listen to this or maybe it's just a song I have the idea for. Yeah. So then I'm like, okay, they're going to be here for this song regardless if I make a video or not. They're right. going to like this song. I could push it forever so for that i'm just like all right i got this song don't change i really like it and i have this cool concept from snoop dogg and let's just see if we can make like an entertaining video of it and then from there i think the video kind of drew people in there like man i kind of i kind of like this song and then it just kind of ended up being i would call that probably my most popular song it just kind of don't change one of my most popular songs yeah i gotta tell you that hearing that song it's funny because i i did start the song over um I can't remember if it was yesterday I was walking. Maybe I started listening to it the day before. I can't remember. But I I, I started it over because I was so... Uh, there was this sort of level of honest self-reflection in the lyrics of that song. Yes, sir. Where you're kind of self-examining yourself. That you're not going to change and this person's not going to yeah. change. And that is just not <laughs> what people say in hip-hop. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, when I when I describe my music, I'm like, yeah, I kind of make like R and B music, but I just I don't sing. So, right, right. And I'm not gonna try to sing uh, for the most part. Nine right. times out of ten, I'm not gonna try to sing via like auto tune or make 
all these songs. Even though I do like auto tune, I do use it sometimes. I do try to sing sometimes before like a whole record or trying to be like, like an R&B artist. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to be a hip hop artist, and like my just my songs are based around the love concept. So I'm right. trying to figure out all different angles or all different ways that I can talk about love or things that people aren't saying in typical rap love songs. That's what I, I mean. That's what I thought. Like I yeah. was like, this is a really fucking unique perspective in yeah. this style of music because it's there's there's no bravado in it yeah because if all my like songs you're just being honest yep if i'm making 10 songs about love how can i talk about love in 10 different ways it can't always be like hey like i just met you and i like you and we went on a date and you know i think i love you now or we hooked up or you know that would be one story that you could tell but what about the fights what about you know that in between ground where maybe you're kind of fighting with someone maybe you're kind of loving that person you know so just trying to figure out you know different scenarios how what's a female's point of view right. sometimes i might be writing something from a male's point of view on how i feel this way and i say no what if i said the girl said this instead maybe i'm writing it from a male's point of view but then in the song i just change it saying okay this is what she's saying actually right so i'm just looking for different ways to kind of attack that subject or Maybe I'm, I hear a song and I might write, I might think, okay, maybe one day I'll just keep it as a concept. Maybe I can write a reply to this song. And oh, yeah. Then, and, you know, no one will know that it's a reply to that song. I won't make it obvious, but, you know, that's the subject of just trying to reply to this thing. So I think it's just about, you know, trying to find all those things. The The song starts with, we just met and I told the world and I love the rumors. That's what I heard. So you still get the hip hop, the little yeah, wordplay yeah. yeah. in it. And, but it's just like, like you said, it's good. Like, the, kinda the, 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 yeah, I meant more like the subject matter. Is like, yeah, yeah, there's not a lot of vulnerability in hip hop. Yeah. So I, a lot, a lot so of fronting. I, so, yeah, that was my long way of trying to tell you that, like, yeah, you know, trying to bring that that vulnerability in there and like, you know, just talk about things that aren't always spoken about, even on R&B songs. So, yeah, yeah. Um, all right, so let's get to the bottom of, of what's who who uh, who Wes Denzel is. Yes, you were you born in San Antonio? I was born in Fort Stewart, Georgia. Okay, when did you move to San Antonio? I moved to San Antonio in two thousand six. So born in Fort Stewart, Georgia, uh, then moved to St. Louis. That's where my father was from. We lived in St. Louis for a while. Uh, both parents were in the military. My dad retired first. Mom was still in the military, and then she ended up getting um, stationed in San Antonio. So in 2006, yeah, that's when we moved down here. And then just been here since, went to college in Corpus, so took a little break. Oh, and yeah. then came back here after college. Uh, I kind of liked it. I felt like it was just like a good middle ground if I needed to go somewhere. I mean, everybody from Texas is used to driving. So, you know, driving to Austin is just an hour. You drive, you want to drive to Houston, it's three hours. Don't really drive to Dallas, but, you know, I think about it. <laughs> so... So, yeah, so I felt like it was just, like, a good place to live. Dallas is just a little bit, like, it's, like, from San Antonio, it's, like, one more hour. Then It's just, like, four yeah. hours, a little yeah, over yeah, four yeah. hours. Oh, it's just, like, man, a, little a little bit, much. like, a little bit too long. A little too long. Um, but it is good to live in this area where you can, you know, I've always found it to be, you know, through all my years of, like, touring and everything, you're right in the middle of everything. And, honestly, if you want to just go around and build up a crowd regionally, you know, Dallas isn't that far. And if you want to go micro shit and, like, go to, like, Waco and, like, you know, San Marcos and, like, you know, you can do that stuff if you want to. Yeah, yeah. I know for a while, uh, at least in college, we were doing a, a lot of these hip-hop shows out in um, Houston. Um, I think she still throws it. I even tried to bring the concept to... um one of the companies or promoters in San Antonio, pretty big. I think they changed their name now, but Scoremore, I know the venues make everything all weird, but Scoremore used to be the company um, in Texas that brought, if there was a big hip hop act coming to Texas, at least back in the day during like 2011 to 2015, that, you know, they would bring the artists, it would be through them, they would be, have the venue or whatever. So the lady in Houston, she does this open mic concept and I would do it myself, but, you know, I don't have as easily, you try to book a venue yourself, it's pretty, like, hard, or you're dealing with all these security issues, so if Scoremore already has the venues, you know, kind of in their right. hand, they're working deal and deal. I There's, like, an infrastructure. Yeah. So they were trying to do yeah. an open mic at the time, and I had figured out a way 
you know, to do an open mic, and I tried to give that to him, but it just never, it never went anywhere. Is there a battle aspect to an open mic? No, it's just, oh. uh, it's just like, hey, you want to perform? There's really nowhere to perform. You don't have right, somebody right. to book you, but cool. you know, maybe you just made your first. And you're like, man, I really want to do a show. Yeah. So you know, you just go to an open mic. It's pretty popular, like in like a lot of big cities. But yeah, so I just try to bring that. I figured out the secret to all this, which you would never imagine, is not telling people there's an open mic. Not saying like, hey, you, you can't even tell them. If you tell them, we'll give you a hundred dollars. That's not even a secret. If you tell somebody, like, hey, I'll make a flyer with your name on it for this open mic, people will go crazy. That is the secret. Just say, hey, man, if you sign up for this, we'll make you a flyer right away. Right. Put all the names on there. If yeah. you just get one, maybe one big local guy or something. If that's right. the person you want to pay for your open mic just to get it popular and get it circulating, you can do that at first, trying to get it off. But right. after that, once it's kind of established. That's all you have to do. Be like, man, you want to perform? You never performed before? How about I put your name on this flyer with all these other people? And people are just excited. Like, yeah, I'm doing a show. That's pretty awesome. And it's just open mic. It's funny because it's, it's not, it's diff- it, sounds, it sounds better than like the open mics of like acoustic people. You know, I mean, those if, are kind of sad. I mean, if you're acoustic, come, come through. Oh, so you're just like anybody. Coming that would be the, I think that would be the goal. I mean, eventually, so maybe you get to a point, maybe you start off doing it for free, but maybe, you know, to cover your expenses. Right. I don't know if, if a regular person wants to steal this ideal or something. It's fine. I know it takes a lot for people to actually execute something, so I'm okay with saying it. But if you wanted to start off for free, but eventually your goal is maybe you charge, I don't know, you want to perform just $10 per person. Yeah. And maybe you get you have the venue for I don't know how many hours and you just say, all right, you got a slot. You got 10 minutes to do your thing. So if you play guitar, you play acoustic, as long as they have the setup for it or say, hey, if you want to play that, you need to bring your own guitar speaker or whatever you tell right, them. Right. And most people be like, all right, I'm just happy to be yeah, performing, happy whatever. Yeah. So, yeah. so so so, yeah. So if you want to do that or if you want to keep it just like, hey, are you sure you want to play this acoustic guitar is going to be all hip hop acts? I don't know if that's your crowd. And maybe they'll say. No, maybe they'll be like, oh, I don't care. I just want to, you know, most people just want to perform. Uh, yeah. Figure it out. You know, you don't really care if there's one person there watching you. You don't You don't care if everybody else does the same music. You're just like, man, I'm getting to perform. Yeah. I'm really far away. Like, <laughs> see that picture? That's when I was 14. That picture where I've got that guitar. Oh, I see. That was a long, that was 1983. Nice. Yeah, that was a long time ago. Um, that's, that, that was when I, used to feel like that now i'm always like what what am i getting <laughs> that's not true i actually do a lot of shit that doesn't pay but um so so did you start making like did you start rapping and shit in college or where did you when did that bug get you uh, so let's see so i was i don't know if i was five or six oh. i seen the nelly country grammar video and I said, okay, I want to do that. I was like, I didn't say I want to rap. I was just like, okay, I want to be an entertainer one day. That was just my thought. I was just like, man, this video is really, I was a little small kid in St. Louis. You know, you see it, if you watch that video, it's like a really kind of like city. It feels like, you know, you know from. where he's from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So seeing that is what I wanted to do. And of course you have like your siblings tell you those stories. You know, when you were two right. years old, yeah, you yeah, were yeah. singing yeah. the words to yeah. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Uh, so... Fast forward, um, fifth grade, wrote my first rap. I have no clue. I can't remember it. I'm not that good to, you know, remember what I wrote. But fifth grade, wrote my first rap. And then I think sixth grade was the first time that I kind of recorded. I was up visiting um, my cousin in New York and his friend had a little home recording setup kind of like this but just imagine maybe for like a hip-hop artist or okay. something yeah so that's the first time i kind of got introduced to like seeing a program Every, right. everybody right. fell asleep and i was kind of i was like man i don't know how to work any of this and i just kind of looked and i figured out all right this is how you press record so that's my first introduction there and i think i just got you know a little more interested in it and then eighth grade i built my first i didn't build it that sounds grand but i made my first home studio yeah. uh, i just maybe had like a little wired mic from walmart yeah um i'm not even sure if i had an interface or anything but um i had that for just like a little bit and then yeah. eventually not eventually but maybe like a year later i leveled up um i got an m audio nova i don't even think they make that microphone anymore and i had an m audio little interface unit uh-huh. and i had my computer and i used to use um there is a free one but i forget it reaper reaper was like a good free one back uh-huh. in the day 
Uh, so I used to use that and the M audio Nova held me down until like COVID and it didn't even die or anything. I just felt like, man, I need, I need a new mic. I can't keep using <laughs> this 10 year old mic, but you know, my mixing was getting better. So, you know, that kind of mask, you know, that if you're not using like the best yeah. mic ever, but that M audio what? Nova is like the best hundred dollar mic ever. Yeah. What happened when you got a better mic? Did it freak you out? <laughs> <laughs> no i just it does you do mix you do have to mix different obviously yeah, you're like yeah. ah like because uh, i think before i forget what mic i have now i have a road uh a road nta uh-huh. but um i replaced the the tube inside with a vintage tube i did all this research oh, started becoming you. a nerd it, it yeah. doesn't barely even sounds different so <laughs> so i don't know why i did it but yeah but yeah i did that well, that's how uh, you know you're a nerd when you're <laughs> like you can't tell the difference in the sound unless you're me but it is really important to me but yeah, yeah but before that i think i tried the uh the sm7b and i just didn't like what like when i was trying to mix and everything and i had the little the amplifier or whatever and i was trying to mix and everything and it just didn't like do it for me but yeah during covid i just felt like i needed to upgrade my equipment because i was like if i don't do it now right i was like i'm never gonna i'm using the first generation focus right 2i2 that ever came out in any store uh, so i'm still using this they've got all these generations out right. now and stuff is much better so um I just ended up buying a Babyface Pro RME because uh, yeah. I they I read that like they last really long. I was trying to decide that between that and um there's a popular one I forget the name of it but um there's a popular interface everybody uses so you'll see it all the time. It has the big knob in the middle. Oh yeah yeah, M Audio Note that people uh, that people like. I, um, I know what you're talking about. Yeah I can't um, I don't know why I can't think of the sh- name right now. Not Behringer. Uh, but but, yeah, they but, have like a ton yeah. of plugins. They're known for like their plugins and stuff. So yeah, I was just trying to decide between that and I seen that you know RME still supports stuff they put out in the 90s. They still give updates and stuff. So I was like, let's go RME because I know if I keep something, I just kept this bad focus right for the past ten yeah, years and yeah. made it last. So. I was like, let's just make this last. I got a pretty substantial upgrade on the microphone, even though I, I kind of got it on sale off Amazon just randomly. I was going to pay. I think the mic was like 700 bucks. I got off Amazon for 500 Yeah. And I've never seen it at that price on Amazon again. And it was from like the authorized seller. So, so yeah, I don't know. We're talking about some nerd stuff right no, now. No, no, no. That's good <laughs> stuff. I, I mean, that thing's 17 years old and I still like, I have fun using it. Yes. I don't yeah. like being able to edit and loop and fix. I like, I mean, eventually it has to go into Pro Tools, but yeah. I, I don't like, I mean, I have fun using that. I thing. mean, yeah, I, like, that, I like faders and knobs and shit. Yeah, and that's one reason stuff. I was debating with the RME versus the Universal Audio uh, <laughs> interface is because they both had the digital right, mixing UA, boards. That's the one you're talking and, uh, about. Yeah. So I wanted something with at least a digital mixing board and right. not just me like messing with like. The volume not even though I seen good interfaces that have that. Sure. I almost got one. I know I know a friend who just got one that I was considering at the time. But yeah, I just wanted something that like, you know, I could see in there and adjust. Even though I just I save the settings, so I don't always have to mess around with it. But yeah, right. So then you you were doing stuff with your your friend in Spain. What was his name again? Uh, Beam. During the COVID lockdown. I uh, did I find him during COVID. Uh maybe who worked with you on the almost happy record i was almost happy i cannot I remember was happy. I, Sorry. no it's okay i was just saying it to myself oh. i don't i don't know i would have to i don't remember uh i know um don't change is produced by tantu beats but i think that's a lot of um a lot of random just me looking on the internet and youtube or beat stars uh just for beats that kind of go with each other do you ever go- make your own yes yeah so I make my own. I've done a full project to where I made my own. And then after that, you know, since I'm not really like in that heart beat maker, I think I felt like, all right, I got that out of my system. I know if I need to, right. I can make a song from scratch if I absolutely have to. So so I don't really do it now. Um, I do try to do it for other artists or I'll send other, other artists beats. But normally most people I figured out. So what I do is I try to make like a good eight or four bar loop sometimes you know a little bit longer just depending on what i have in there and just loop that up for three minutes and i'm like hey 
here's this beat I made. This is basically it. Yeah. Let's work on it together. So as you write, let's figure out where we want the drops. Right, let's right. figure out, let's yeah. not pre-write it for you. Right. So, you know, I mean, maybe you don't know, but sometimes you get some beats and they already have the drops in them or right. when you need to do X, Y, Z. I think that's why probably I do like a lot of like restructuring or structuring stuff different in songs. So, so yeah, and that's kind of how I want to work with artists is just kind of being like hands on with the song. And right. if you want to add a sound here, let's add that sound. Let's go through it like together but we got the bass here right so as long as we got the bass we can write to that it's like a skeleton but you know let's figure out the rest together and just kind of go back and forth right so i've got that maybe like once or twice to where i've done some stuff for artists and then most of the times it's just me sending it and then it just it doesn't turn into anything because i think i don't know if it's just too hard for people to work like that or just like it already not being like structured out beat right that people are just like ah whatever yeah but yeah, but I had a random guy. I think I threw up a beat for sale online and I had a random guy use it. So that was kind of cool. I told him, I was like, man, if you need the stems, like hit me up. I don't even care that you purchased it. I was like, I'm glad you're using it. So that's awesome. So yeah. Um, you opened for Kendrick Lamar. Yes. That was my very first show. That I was talking about the white rabbit open for Kendrick Lamar and Schoolboy Q. Fuck. So I was, I was the last person to go on after they went on obviously they, these it was are, before kendrick this exploded. is them at the beginning of their careers i think Still. um section 80 was out okay, so right okay. before good kid right mad city but but yeah it was it was an experience just a bunch of people just looking at you weird you know yeah but yeah i still i think i just put a photo up on my site from that show but yeah that was my very first what i would call my real my very first real performance and that was a score more show wow so yeah so that's cool stuff yeah yeah, no shit, man. So uh, let me ask you this. Your songs about love and uh, covering it from all sides. What is, uh, what, do you have like an active, do you, are you like a dating guy? Or are you like a, what's your? No, what's your no, I'm, I'm married. You are? So uh, yeah, I've been with my wife 11 years, maybe almost 12. Holy so, moly. So yeah, so I'm married. So uh, mainly, you know, just just not making up stuff, but, you know, just talking to friends seeing what they go through that's where you pick up um, your. um of course we me and my wife fight like a normal couple go through all that stuff so what does she do we're just trying to think a story she's a stay-at-home mom right now oh so you have kids too yes sir how many i have two kids wow yeah i like that you're asking i don't know <laughs> <laughs> you just you never know you never know how old are they <laughs> Uh, one is two. The other one is five months, almost six okay. months. So they don't know your music or anything yet. They, my two year old kind of does. Yeah. She'll see me performing sometimes. And she'll just, she just knows it's me. I don't yeah. know if she puts it together that yeah. like, you know, or if she hears my song playing, she'll go, it's me. But I don't think she's like singing along Yeah. or whatever. But yeah, they're cool. Yeah. And your wife, she loves it. She loves it. So yeah, I try to, um, not keep her out of it but you know i try to keep that like i don't like showing her stuff early i like to see like her genu genuine reaction because you know you could show like somebody close to you something oh, yeah. or like your partner something it's and terrible. maybe they don't give you like the true feedback <laughs> or they might get angry at something and then like you're overthinking right, like right. the song or right. whatever so so yeah so i just try to put out that way if it's about to come out already and it's already in motion then i'll, I'll play it for her. i think i played her zodiac the other night um so so yeah she supports me she likes it so that's all you can ask for. She go, who the fuck is this Gemini? <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Um, do you, uh, what do you think about like what's going on in the world? Like, what are you going to tell your kids? Like, it's a, we live in a crazy world, right? Is it just me or like, like I get scared. Like now I've never, ever, like my family came here from Cuba mm -hmm. in like 1959. So I was born here. But like, I never thought like, oh man, I'd move somewhere else. But now I'm like, man, I should like move to like Puerto Vallarta. Like start a little bar there and play every night. Still do the podcast if I want to. Yeah, Mexican that would be dudes. cool. Yeah. But like, I mean, this is it got, like between like the climate stuff and the pandemic stuff and the crazy political stuff and just kind of the anger and shootings and just like. Like, do you, does that freak you out on the level of like, I have kids, man. How am I going to stop this from happening to them? No, but I'm a pretty chill person. But but no, I wouldn't say it freaks me out. I haven't thought about moving or anything, at least not from the country. Right. Um, I mean, I haven't given so, it serious thought, but I, I did start thinking. Like, so, no, I mean, yeah. to keep it simple, I just know 
my daughter wakes up she just wants to go to the park so you know if, it, <laughs> if it's all good at the park man i'm not i'm not thinking about too much else i think if you start not paying attention to it i think you're aware and you know what's going on but i think if you maybe dive too much into it then you know you just get distracted with possibilities or what ifs that would be like somebody that would be like you putting out a song and just every day you're going all right when's the record deal coming I know, yeah, yeah, I know yeah. it's gonna be uh, in yeah, my yeah, inbox yeah, today. Yeah, you're right. When's that record? You're right. When's you that record? Living in the moment. And then you just like you know you don't want to kind of yeah. kind of think that way. Yeah. So so yeah. So I just try to take it day by day. Even the last couple of years, like I'm sorry to keep on digging. No, but like, you're, you you're sure? Good. Come on, man. Day, I'm a chill <laughs> dude, day by day. I'm like t- uh, I got a CBD sponsor. can I take it all? <laughs> like as soon as they give it to me. <laughs> Well, I just get anxious. It's so yeah. weird. It's a scary. Yeah, so word. I don't. I don't yeah. have that. So maybe like, uh, like my wife would be more like that. But I think uh, for me, I don't know if I don't worry, but I'm just, I'm just relaxed. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I should worry. Maybe Where I, do you? Maybe on the way home, I'll be like, man. <laughs> I, just, I, just, I hope I didn't freak you out. <laughs> no, you're good. I do that at strip clubs. Like whenever I'm at a strip club, for some reason, I start thinking about the end of the world. It totally the reminds me of the end of the world. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think I've had thoughts about the end of the world, but not like the end of the world might happen tomorrow. No, no, no. I don't. I just, I'm just like at a strip club. I'm like looking around, and I'm like, oh, yeah, this is the worst of everyone. I it's do like have everyone at their very bottom like level, and this is what it's going to be like at the end. Yeah, I do have. I don't know if this is a strange thought. I have been places to where maybe I feel like the vibe is off, or something is happening, and I'm like, I do not want to die here. I am not okay with dying yeah. in this place. Yeah. And then I've been places where like I've just nothing's been happening and I've just been enjoying it and I'm just kind of like in like a peaceful element. I'm like, man, if something happened right now, I wouldn't even be, I'd be okay with dying here. So I don't know. I don't know you if are that's a chill a, guy. I don't know if that's a normal thought, but, but yeah. So. Oh man, I'm always like, man, if I die, someone's got to come here and get my porn collection, get rid of it before my grandma finds it. <laughs> someone's got to feed Rosie. Um. Do you ever go to Sam's? I play there a lot. Sam's, no. You know what I'm talking about? No. San Antonio? I, I, thought, I thought about Sam's Club when you said that. So. <laughs> I play. I do Wednesdays at Sam's Club, lunchtime. Uh, <laughs> no, there's Sam's Burger Joint. Sam- it's like oh, a rock Sam's. venue. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm talking yeah. about? Yeah, I've, I've heard of Sam's. So, so yeah. Um, I, I've never, I've never like been there, or at least not there for music or seeing music. But I haven't seen music in a lot of places. But also... I'm not going out too much. Pretty much the only time catching me out is if I'm performing right? for the most part. So, yeah. Is there stuff you're listening to that keeps you kind of inspired and going? Is it? Is there anything new that's rocking your boat? Listening? Um, I don't want to be one of those guys like, man, I just listen to myself. Um, but, you, I mean, if you're, making, if you're making songs and you're mixing songs and you're mastering songs, you're listening to yourself a lot. Yeah, uh, I mean that's not in a bad way. You a lot to. in just one in one setting. <laughs> so maybe if I'm mixing Zodiac, I might have ten mixes of Zodiac, but they all came within you know the two days. I wasn't yeah. taking like you know. Are you are you a uh, true crime Zodiac killer person? Do you are you a fan of that guy? Uh, it came from not a fan. I mean, that, what I mean, that's where the name and the cover art came from. But no, right. not not a fan. Did you ever see that movie Zodiac? Yeah, I seen it. So I was trying to look for stuff to kind of promo with. When I before I made the art, and uh, we just kind of settled on the sketch. But but yeah, when I was thinking of Zodiac, you know who I was actually thinking of? The um, I was uh, thinking Game of Ted Bomber. Bundy. Oh, I was yeah, I was thinking of Ted Bundy. Oh, the rapist guy it. that killed the lady. The one that the like some guy. yeah, he was hand- everybody thought he was yeah, attractive. Yeah. 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 And then, I, and then I go, butt. wait a minute. I'm like, man, <laughs> Zodiac guy is boring. <laughs> well, the Zodiac guy, I mean, he's just weird. Like, yeah. He wrote all those letters and had all that weird cryptic, decipherable thing. And was like one of those guys writing the police and being like, yeah. you didn't catch me this time. And like they, just scary, like a movie they, kind of guy. And they did not catch him. So, <laughs> No, I know. It's so weird. <laughs> um, uh, so no big shows coming up, but the song Zodiac Killer will be out. Are you doing a video for that? um i have an idea so we might do it i think on friday we're gonna have a lyric video come out that's pretty cool oh that's cool um so we don't have some cool animations but as far as like an official music video not yet but i do have something in mind that i would like to do uh that's pretty much where all my videos come from i don't really reach out to anyone for concepts i normally have the idea uh 
like director's vision and then yeah. i'll kind of just let them rock out on the edit of course i probably might send you like a three-page long text about the edit <laughs> but for the most part i don't tell them how to edit anything but as far as shooting i know kind of how i want something shot and how i want it to look so that's so, what yeah. all the great artists are like so you know the, you know you know what you want you know what you want to do you just don't know how to work a camera as well as the guy that does so yeah. like hey make it look like this yeah yeah pretty much that's great man um next time you play in austin you gotta uh, hit me up because i'd love to, i'd love to come see you oh and, yeah I'll, and check it out i for sure i'll add you to my list of people i text they're like oh i got a show in austin and yeah. then everybody tells me that they're coming and then they don't come. well <laughs> I, i'll tell you i'm not coming if i'm not coming i'm good Thank, at that i, I appreciate i don't it. usually I, like if i say i'm gonna go to a thing I go. And then sometimes people just uh, don't expect to see him. I think my my friend Key was at my last show. I didn't expect him to be there. I was like, oh, it's nice to see a familiar face in the crowd. So, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, I don't don't hold it against people. I don't know everybody gets, like, busy or something. I don't expect people to come. I think I've lived with that disappointment, like, a long time ago. You telling people you have a show, and they tell you they're going to come, and then you're like, man... (laughs) Yeah, well, this I mean, is my only show for like the next. When right, you, this right. is when you don't know yeah, if you're going to perform again. You're like, yo, this yeah. <laughs> show for the rest of my life. <laughs> the last one, guys. <laughs> it's the last one ever. Because <laughs> they always go when they miss your show. They always go, oh, I'm so sorry. When is the next one? And it's like, yeah. oh, I'm not on tour. I don't know what you think this career is or how popular you think I am. But, but yeah, but nowadays. There's always, there's, man, yeah. And yeah, I, nowadays I know something's coming up. So even if I didn't have it, I just think that like just when you're first starting, everything's kind of. Yeah important to you and i'm trying to get back to that i've been watching uh some interviews to kind of capture that feeling um i compare it to when you get started you know you just want to sell you're just excited that somebody wants to buy your your one t-shirt to compare it to shirts and if somebody buys one shirt from you you're just like oh my oh my god i can't believe somebody brought one shirt and maybe you get successful with those right. shirts and people buy are buying like 50 shirts 100 shirts and then like later on you just lose that excitement of you know when somebody just purchased one shirt yeah. So I'm just trying to find a lot of things. Not that I take for granted, but I'm trying to remember to be excited about a lot of things that, you know, somebody probably not in my position would be excited to be having sure. in their career. Because, you know, even when you don't think you're at whatever level, there's always somebody like, man, I wish they're probably looking at you post something like, man, I wish I could do that. Or I wish I could have a show there. Or, I wish I could be on KUTX. So. I just remember to be appreciative and be excited for all these little opportunities. I wished I was as cool as you when I was watching those videos. <laughs> Seriously. I was like, why am I just like some lame dude? You know what I, I think about, and I don't I don't talk about it that much, but I've talked about it with some people. It's funny, in the world of like hip hop and rap, the guys that come up in that, there's like a business sense and savvy that they have, but like guys in rock are like, <laughs> I don't even know what time it is, man. You know what I mean? Like... <laughs> There's like such a fucking weird hippy dippy thing to like. Do you think that's like most people in hip hop and rap are coming from a place where they're trying to get out of? Yeah, I think for a lot of artists, I don't I don't want to say that they don't like making music, but I think it's just like a stepping stone. So they're just looking for like that open door opportunity to right. just get some money and get to somewhere else or branch that out to do something. But maybe they're not like in love with the music. Cause um I mean I I mean probably like you you spent countless money on equipment yeah. or traveling places yeah. to perform for yeah. five minutes you could <laughs> you'd like would you like think about telling like a normal person like yeah I just drove yeah, yeah. four hours yeah, to yeah. Dallas <laughs> just to perform for ten minutes and I didn't get paid or anything and they're probably looking yeah. at you like you did what yeah so so yeah so um I think I'm on that side of just you know you spending all this money in hopes like maybe you're not actively hoping that like yo this is my shot but I think you know probably deep down in the back of your mind you're like man I hope something works at some point yeah <laughs> and then you if got it these did, kids and even if it doesn't i mean yeah. a part of you was like okay with it because you just love making music you think you know regardless right. i haven't made money all this time and i'm still doing it so there must right. be something other than you know if i was just trying to get a quick buck i'm probably just doing it for like a year or two and i'm just like all right on to the next but you're what, what else can i try so so yeah so i've been doing this a while like i said been recording since 2006 i don't plan on stopping i try to write every day so, yeah, I'm still spending money to do stuff that I don't know is going to be beneficial or not. And just, you know, taking the random. That's what I told someone the other day. I said, you know, it's just random. I'm like if something happens or not, 
I couldn't tell you most of the stuff that hap- that's happened to me or that's performed places. It's always just been, you know, just random opportunity, not something that I was seeking out for, not something I was trying to get. It's just like, oh, you just happen to hear this at this point and you just happen to find me, happen to like me enough to reach out. So everything's, you know, just kind of random. Uh, so and I try to take that, too. It doesn't take a million listens to you know, blow up or get famous or get some money or whatever. It just takes the right listen. So you just need one listen. Your song doesn't need a million plays. If your song has one play and that one play was Jay-Z and he liked it, that's a good one listen. Yeah. Yeah. They're gonna, they're gonna tell you to delete your catalog anyway, so it's <laughs> a good it's a good one listen. <laughs> they are. Well, man, uh, this has been great. Thank you for for making the trip down here. I did not realize you would be coming from San Antonio. No, it's good. I wanted to. I wanted good. to do it in person. So, good. Me so, too. Yeah, so me it too. Worked out. Um, it's great to meet you. And please let me know when you're coming back. Uh, Wes Denzel, Zodiac Killer, his latest single. There's a slew of stuff that you can find out there on the streaming services. He was a February 2021 KUT Artist of the Month, KUTX Artist of the Month. Uh, you can check out his live performances there on his on his website. And uh, yeah, check out all those singles. Don't change crazy. Uh, let you down. Why don't you? And also Zodiac Killer out now. Peace. Thank you. Uh, great talking to you, man. Yes, sir. That was Wes Denzel on my birthday show. Great talking to him. Check out his single Zodiac Killer, which you were just hearing right there. And you will hear the rest of when I stop talking. Uh, he's open for Kendrick Lamar, Schoolie Boy D. He's done South by Southwest. Find him at westdenzel.com. A great load of great singles, great record out there called I Only Get Wild With You, which I really enjoy. Also, Almost Happy from 2020, great record. Westdenzel.com. Gang, when you're out there checking out westdenzel.com, don't forget that you can subscribe to this podcast wherever it is that you find podcasts, be it Apple Podcasts, Spotify, TuneIn, Overcast, Stitcher, anywhere you find podcasts, new shows every Tuesday and every Friday. Uh, sometimes three shows like this week monday wednesday and friday so there's a lot of shows i'm going to be dropping some from the vault shows because i think we had a really killer year this year with a lot of really over the top you know great artists that i've always wanted to talk to eric johnson g love rudy sarzo doug clifford from earlier this week did you go back and listen to that my god also hey uh i guess it's my birthday so uh happy birthday to me you guys want to sing sing me happy birthday no, 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 no. Oh, thank you. No, 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 no. Thank you. No, 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 no. <laughs> Have a great weekend, whatever you're doing. If you're out there at South by Southwest, don't forget to drop by uh, Saturday, October 15th at 1245 at the Honda stage to see Como, Lo, Como Las Movies with their special performance with uh, Sheila. All right? Have a great weekend, whatever you're doing. Uh, let's get down. She was a Scorpio Said she was Aquarius A Capricorn would be nice to know Sign with your horse, go red today. I'm on your mind, watch me run through your head today. On how we connected, the moon and the stars, look how we reflected. Is this war fine or to keep your heart protected? Use it to align it, I use it as a weapon. We both are the signs, is it that what you texted? Mad at me again, but is that so progressive? Is that how you teach me a lesson? The look in your eyes, no surprise, it get hectic. Why would you mind or worry about who I mess with? It really don't advise you cross the line for this person. Pisces. Hey. Found out she was a Scorpio. Said she was a Pisces. Hey. Found out she was a Scorpio. Ooh, what else you find out? Tell her brother. Said she was a Libra. A Gemini would be nice to know. She was a Sagittarius Me and the Virgo made love